So next step, I want to do exactly the same thing I did in a one period setting in a multi period setting, something that, that works for long lasting securities. First, a return identity in logs, and then a present value formula in logs. And we'll use it in the same way to understand our, our long horizon regressions. Okay, first step is the Campbell Schiller linearized return identity. Let's meet it. Here's what it says. Return, log return, is approximately rho, which is a number like about 0.96, times tomorrow's log price dividend ratio plus dividend growth minus today's price dividend ratio. Intuitively, it, it's not saying anything unusual. It's saying, how do you get a good return? You get a good return by prices being high tomorrow, by getting a lot of dividends, or prices being low today. So uh, it's saying something completely reasonable. And all it is is a log linearization of the definition of return. There's no theory in here. It's just the definition of return. So how do you do that? Well, there's the return. The return is price plus dividend over price. Express that in terms of price dividend ratios and dividend growth rates. Take logs. Little letters are logs of big letters. The trouble here, of course, is you have the log of 1 plus something, which isn't 1 plus the log of something. To do that, we take a first order Taylor expansion. And since we're interested in variances and covariances, we'll drop the constants in everything we do after the fact. And so the log linearized version uh, of the definition of return is just the Campbell Schiller return identity. That'll be useful in many, many different places, where in, in a, as well as in deriving the present value identity. So that's the first formula you need to remember. Next formula. Let's turn that into a present value identity the same way we did in a one period model. We're going to pull the price to the left and try to put the other stuff on the right. So we've got the return identity. Uh, what do we do? Put the price on the left, the other stuff on the right, price today, price tomorrow, other stuff, and then just iterate that thing forward. That's where the row to the j form, the row to the j minus one terms come from. So what do we get now? Price dividend ratio today, sum of rho to the j minus 1 future dividend growth, future returns, and k. I just did it k times forwards. Now we'll talk a little bit about sending this last term to zero. Rho is a number less than 1, so so long as price dividend ratios don't explode, that thing goes to zero. And, and we'll think a little bit more deeply about the economics of that. But putting that in place for the moment, you have the Campbell Schiller present value. We have the Campbell Schiller return identity and it results in the Campbell Schiller present value identity. Now, like the return identity, it's just an identity. The only content here is the definition of return. It holds ex post as well as ex ante. And you can see that in a sense, this is really just a definition of long run return. What gives you returns in the long run? Well, returns in the long run come from a low price or from lots of future dividends. In the long run, you eat the dividends, you don't sell it. So it's just the definition of return. Anything that holds ex post, again, also holds ex ante. So price dividend ratio is expected dividend growth and expected return, and we have a present value formula. Now, it's linear present value formula, which is very nice. We have the expected dividend growth, and we discount that we have the ability to have time varying discount rates by time varying returns, but those are all, these all enter linearly. Uh, a whole term structure of expected returns can now affect uh, prices. And it says the same thing. Where do high prices come from? They come from either high expectations of future dividend growth or from low expectations of future returns, from low risk premium, from being willing to hold prices despite low returns. That makes hold assets despite low returns. That gives you high prices at, at low returns. But you see now, of course, that, that prices, that ex expectations far in the future can raise uh, prices today. So it's a, it's a beautiful linearized present value formula, which we'll be able to use to put together observations about prices, long-run dividend growth, and long-run returns.